right, everybody, welcome. Just uh, one second here. Hope everybody can hear me okay. I was trying to fix, I feel like my audio is usually a little loud. So uh, I was trying to get a little bit more of an appropriate volume. <clears throat> All right. Welcome, welcome. All right. Got a lot of cool stuff here today. It is raining here. Not sure if people will hear that. Some thunder and rain out the window here. All right, who we got here? So we're gonna do some drawing today, but before I get into the drawing, I'm gonna show some more books. I had a good time showing off some indie stuff last week. If you missed that, definitely wanna tune in. You can find all the old videos in the live section of my YouTube page. So you can uh, head over there if you missed last week. I showed off a lot of cool self-published work. And then this week, um, I've got some, some other pretty much, yeah, self-published stuff, but I'm focusing on one specific studio. Uh, the guys over at Decadence. So, uh, and then I have a couple cool announcements. So I'll get to the announcements and their little uh, special thing later. Um, but first, let's look through some of these uh, Decadence books. So, Decadence Comics, our Decadence Press, is a collective um, of creators in England. Well, I, well, one of them is in England. The other one I think is in Greece. There's two. It's basically two guys, uh, Lando. And then uh, Stathis Semberlis. There we go. Semberlis. Sem Sembertalidis. Sembertalidis. I don't know how you say that. Um, I, I can't remember where I discovered these guys. It was probably on Tumblr some long time ago. And um, ordered some of their work and was completely blown away by it. They put out a lot of stuff. Like, this is not even close to all of it here. Um, they do mini comics. They do these kind of uh, university... Uh, <laughs> you know, college course reader style books um, too. And then they've d done other books that are, that are uh, I'll show in a little bit that are kind of collections. Um, but if you're into sci-fi comics or if you're into manga or if you're into um, even Europe, a lot of European comics, um, you know, you're, you're gonna dig these guys. It's somewhere between like a heavy metal manga and like, and yeah, like a, there's a little bit of a European sort of, uh, sensibility to it um a lot of times uh the stuff that lando does is you know drawn with this sort of like very delicate characters um but he builds these really cool worlds um and a lot of the times he'll have these scenes of, of battles and stuff that are a lot of times silent or he'll have alien text in there and he works in this really cool clean line style that's sort of Again, it's reminiscent of, of, of European stuff, French stuff, but I think also manga. He, he uses speed lines, a lot of the, there's a lot of down angles, and uh, the format feels you know very close to manga just without sort of a zip tone applied. So there's a rawness to it. Um, but so a lot of the stuff that, that Landis does, or Landis, Lando does is, is, is um, sort of there's like a an idea of a far off future it's or maybe not so far off future sort of post-apocalyptic or dystopian a lot of the stuff that he does is in that sort of realm um not all of it of course um and you just get these vignettes of different characters fighting over supplies resources and things of that sort um sometimes there's twists sometimes you know there's tragedy a lot of times there's tragedy at the end um here's one he did that uh, and he always makes these cool choices with the paper. Like this one's on sort of a rough paper, and then you have this sort of creamy interior paper. Really smart printing choices that they do. They do some uh, um, off or not offset uh, risograph, I think, is what some of these were printed. Uh, but then this one is on this orange paper, and this one is is I don't know if you can even put it in a time, past, future, present, but it's sort of this tale of these alien-looking people with tentacle faces and. Uh, Again, mostly silent story. Uh, these lizard folks show up, kind of Planet of the Apes style. 
Um, really just great stuff. I mean, I've reread these hundreds of times. I mean, they're they're really great to, to put on some doom metal or some synth and just sort of dive in and just enjoy the experience of kind of the story that you're being shown. Um, Lando is, I think, a really great artist and, and does amazing paneling, amazing sort of um, just, you know, the, the way he's creating depth and action and all that with, with such you know, few lines is great. And the line weights don't even vary much either. It's it's a very much a sort of a tech pen sort of, t you know, maybe a felt tip pen is it what it seems like he's drawing with. Um, really cool stuff. Um, let me show you a couple of these other ones. Uh, this is the geopolitical manipulation through the use of fungi-based parasites on 186F. What a title. <laughs> what a great title. Um, this one is... Uh, is really cool. It's printed on this kind of yellow paper, but it uh, looks like risograph printing, which is sort of like a mix between Xerox copies and, and offset. Um, Riso gives a cool quality to the images. The ink kind of bleeds a little bit. So with a clean line style like Lando's, it gives it this sort of nice fuzziness, um, just enough to add like a layer of texture to everything. You know, so you have the pe paper texture and then the texture of the ink from the risograph on here. Um, really cool stuff. Hope you guys are digging this. I haven't been seeing is my chat working here. Okay. I'll assume that people can hear me. Uh, <laughs> even though I haven't heard anything in the chat, which is strange. Uh, okay. But yeah, this one is like these fungus. Uh, and uh, it looks like they sort of take over the planet. Uh, but really just amazing stuff. I mean, it's definitely in a vein, right? It, it's a lot of wastelands and things of that sort. Um, Stones in Focus is this one. It's a blue paper with a gray. Looks like it could just be Xerox. Um, he creates really cool creatures. They're like super simple uh, a lot of the times, but sort of alien enough that they, you know, you can tell that it's not Earth that we're on, or if it is Earth, it's far off in the future. Uh, we get to space. And then here is one by Semberless. Uh, so he's the other guy in this sort of group, and, and he does some animations too. If you check out their website, I think it's just decadencecomics.com. Um, oh, cool. Hi, Stinker Ones. Awesome. Don't be sorry. <laughs> Thanks for glad you're cooking dinner. I just did that earlier. This one's called Panspermia. And uh, Semberlitis, Semberli I don't You know, it's like I. I I realize I know a lot about these guys in the sense that I read their work and I've read about them, but um, I don't know how to say his name exactly. Um, I think I even asked, one time I did meet Lando actually. He was here in Chicago for a show and um, he was friends with a friend of mine that was here for the show. And so I was able to meet him, a uh, really nice guy. Uh, didn't get to talk to him very much, but uh, I'm sure I asked him, but I can't remember what he said. So. This guy's first name was Stathis, so I usually would say Stathis. Stathis is like uh, very similar in that there's a sort of a clean uh, dead line, but um, he uses um, stippling and, and, and variations in shapes, sizes to kind of give volume to things and, and show uh, textures. So, you know, you got an arm or something like here, and I'm not sure how much this stuff picks up well, um, and instead of like, ha you know, doing cross hatching to show the way the arm is shaped, he has these sort of dirty splotches on the arm that wrap around it and kind of give a sense of volume. So it's really cool stuff. And it gets really dense, you know, and the, his stuff tends to be even more psychedelic, I would say, uh, for lack of a better term. It's very experimental and the stories are kind of psychedelic. And um, whereas Lando's stuff, a lot of times will have sort of a, a through line or a story that is, um, sort of based on characters in action. Whereas Stathis stuff will just shift from image to image to idea to idea. And this is also really cool stuff to read if you're just kind of, you know, listening to some cool music and kind of in the zone. Um, highly recommend it. And then here's another one by Lando that, that it looks a little more like regular modern day, um, but it has some supernatural elements, another Risograph one. Um, and I believe this is his house that, that we're seeing here is what uh, somebody told me. I don't know if it was him or somebody else. Um, but it's kind of this kid getting stalked by a doppelganger. And uh, it's very cool. 
really cool. I mean, you can see the Otomo influence there. You can see some Jeff Darrow, but then these just razor sharp lines that he uses. You know, everything is just so crisp. Um, so they, I think you can get their stuff, you know, online. You have to pay the international shipping, which is a drag. But you can also, instead of buying their minis, you can also get, uh, if these are still available, they did two collections of Lando's work and uh, Stathis's work. Um, Pycnoleptic Inertia and Gardens of Glass. The Lando Gardens of Glass book is awesome. If you guys haven't, uh, you know, if you're again, if you're into Mobius, if you're into Tomo, you're going to love this. They got a nice spot varnish on there. These were put up by Breakdown Press, and it collects a lot of the minis. Some of them... Like this is one of the ones I have. Um, so it's a lot of the mini stories collected in one spot. But it's great because they're all here. They're printed slightly bigger. And uh, it's just a really beautiful book. Nice paper choices. I mean, look at these zips, man. That's It's cool stuff. And he's UK, but he's in London, I believe, is where uh, Lando is. Uh, this book is really fantastic. Uh, highly recommended. And then Stathis is also very nice. It's got a nice, cool spot varnish on there and a soft touch cover it's just a really fun object and it has this sort of neon quality to it almost glow in the dark on the cover it's really really cool um, so this one again just features all of his shorts and they they're super trippy man and super cool so anyway i i, I recommend checking this stuff out um both great artists uh, that mo most people haven't heard of. So before I get into this drawing, a couple announcements. Uh, first announcement, C2E2 is like a week away, or you know, a week and a half away, uh, C2E2 here in uh, Chicago. Uh, definitely hope that I can see you guys there. Uh, we are um, gonna have a, a great table over in V with me and, and, and Landis and uh, Kenny Porter and uh, David Costa. We're all gonna be right over there. So come over and check out the schlub. One new thing I will have at the show this is a alien commission. Some of you might have seen on my Instagram. It uh, it was a commission I did, um, but I went ahead and got prints made of this. Um, a lot of people really liked it, and I really liked it too. And so I have a basically almost the same size as the uh, original drawing uh, print of this aliens. Uh, I call it Had Hadley's Hope uh, is what I've been calling the piece. So I have some brand new prints of this at C2E2, and then hopefully shortly after that in my shop. And then I will also be at Heroes Con in um, Charlotte this uh, June. Um, so I just found out that today. So I'm very excited to be back at Heroes Con. I'll, I'll have more information about those as they as they draw closer. Um, oh, because the other one I, I will be at is Cartoon Crossroads Columbus in Columbus, Ohio. So please come out for those uh, shows if you're in any of those areas. They're all really good shows that I've done before. And I hope that you folks can, uh, can some of you can make it out. All right, Stinker Buns, work in Brooklyn, even though you're in Wisconsin, so you're gonna miss C2E2, oh, bummer, dude. Well, I hope that work's not too much of a drag, but I feel you. Maybe I'll catch you at some other show. If you've never been to Heroes, I know you'd have to travel for it, but it is, it's a very good show. So, um, one of the things I'm doing at C2E2 is, um, with some of my friends, we're going to exchange some pencils and inks to, uh, we're going to exchange some pencils and inks and ink each other's stuff. So I was saying last week, I have to draw a drawing that is, um, <laughs> that is like tight pencils, which as, as if you've watched my streams before, you know, I don't do super tight pencils. Um, but, uh, you know, so that's the challenge here. I got to make them at least readable enough that one of these other guys can ink it. And, you know, honestly, they're all so talented. I'm sure that even if I did a terrible job with this, um, they would find a way to make it look cool. So, But anyway, the idea here is Cable with a Big Gun. I started it last week, and I had something going that I thought I liked, but it turned out I didn't like it. So <laughs> I... Um, I, I went ahead and started over with the same concept, but um, with uh, with a different layout. So, but yeah, so we're gonna try to firm this up. That's really the only goal tonight is to do a nice uh, 
pencil, a fine, like a pencil drawing. And it's really hard. I'm like fighting the urge to ink this. Like, you know, like right now, like this is how I would have it if I was going to ink it. Like I would ink it from what it looks like right now. Um, but tonight, and that's not going to happen. But we'll, we'll figure it out. This will be a fun, fun. I, I, you know, honestly, doing tight pencils is, is kind of fun um, because there's some decisions that you don't usually get to make when you're inking that you can make with, when you're penciling and some effects you can pull off. And I just, uh, it's more efficient for me if I just get to the inks quicker when I'm doing my own stuff. So, but again, this is not for me. This is a, a fun little side project here. Today I was working on some some projects I still um, can't talk about, but um, they've been I think I was saying last week very research heavy. So it's nice to just draw cable from my mind. I also finally caught up on X Men ninety seven, which I had been sort of not I hadn't watched yet. You know I I just hadn't been able to get to it. Um, so I finally watched it and. Uh, Man, oh man, it was real good. I got up all the way up to episode five, and um, all the episodes were extremely good. And um, I'm there for it. You know, I'm definitely excited to see what they do. They got a lot of talented people working on that show. I was just surprised how much it captured, like X Men, like just distilled it down into like the purest form of X Men. You know, it's just like straight to the vein. It was very cool. I was stoked when Nightcrawler showed up. They really did him did him well. I like that. And oh my gosh, Gambit, so cool. Even Cyclops, I think they, they nailed him. He's he's cool, but he's also a huge dork, you know. <laughs> and I, I like that. That was cool. Actually, that's probably what everyone's watching right now is X Men. I think is is the new one. Did they come out on? Uh, do they come out on uh, Tuesdays? <laughs> what day is it? Oh man! This will be fun. Just loosen this up here. Hey, Jeremy, how you doing? Thanks for swinging by. Matthew, Greg, hello. New episode on Wednesday. Stinker Bun says, "Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll be, I'll be there for it Wednesday. That'd be, that'd be rad. Check it out." So right now what I'm doing on this, it might not look like I'm doing anything. <laughs> I'm basically doing what I would do in my first ink pass and I'm knocking in all the kind of lines that I like and I'm gonna sort of just, after that I'm gonna erase a bunch of this and then start penciling it up tighter and cleaner so that it's not a huge <laughs> mess that doesn't make any sense for, for my, my bud when he inks it. Um, so this is pretty rough and I really wish I had my ink right now because it is easier for me to just kind of be like oh that's going to be a big fat shape or dark area and you can sort of just like crank it in there um, but the advantage of this will be a really cool textured nice drawing so so anyway we're knocking in our shapes here the same way I would if I was uh, inking right now and I have no idea who's going to ink this um, Oh, I have, do have some idea because there's only a limited number of people in the in the running. But uh, Dave Acosta is is one of them. He'll probably end up getting a stab at one of mine or or somebody's. Uh, but uh, Jay Lyston, that'd be cool to see him ink one of these. All right, so we're gonna erase this now. <laughs> And it's gonna be. I'll probably. I'll probably be like. Whoops! I should have done more. 
Let me make sure I got his face here. I, I like a couple of those lines. I'll just want to preserve those. I have to have my light so bright when I'm streaming that it's kind of hard for me to see my paper sometimes. I don't like the light this bright. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. Man, I haven't done this in a minute. Now, this is a trick I learned from Jim Lee, an interview with Jim Lee, where he was, it was, it's in a book I have, I think it's called Comic Artists on Comic Art. Um, I think that's where I, I, I saw this first. But he was saying that, you know, because he, 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 his pencils are pretty rough like mine initially. And so to, to, to get his stuff down to a more crisp line, he will do this blue pencil trick. He also said he would oftentimes trace over it multiple times, just trace it onto a new piece, trace it onto a new piece, and sort of like really distill the drawing down and get the major shapes in there. And I thought that was pretty cool. Um, for me it helps because I, I get so messy in my pencils that I sort of lose what I'm doing. And uh, so this trick helps when I have something that's just really chaotic and I can kind of zero in on, on what's working. And yeah, I mean, it's a lot more racing, <laughs> but, you know, whatever. The paper gets a little dirtier, whatever, you know, it'll still be fine. I must say, though, I'm, I'm used to working on the Strathmore 500, because this stuff does not erase as well on the 300. Whoever inks it will have to deal with that. workout, you know? Omar Comics. Yeah, I don't know, right? You guys probably can't see it at all. I'll get it knocked back in here for you. Um, <laughs> it's a neat trick. That's the idea, you know? Um, so you guys can kind of see, this is sort of like, it'll look magic from there. It'll look like I'm just like magically drawing perfect lines. <laughs> I remember um, there was this TV show it was on like a public access channel or something when I was a kid where some guy would do cartoons, you know, he'd show you like, okay, here's how you draw these cartoons. And I found out that he like would have an underdrawing there. You just couldn't see it like a pencil drawing. But since TV at the time wasn't as, as, as crisp, you know, you couldn't really tell that he had uh, the drawing there. And so to me watching it as a kid, I was like, oh my gosh, he's like the greatest artist ever. He just draws that stuff so easy. John W. I like it, buddy. I like it. Keep that Western energy coming, man. So. Cable's got to have a shoulder pad, right? So that's what we're working on right now. But yeah, X-Men. And he, you know, it's good to see Cable show up finally in that new episode. I was like, all right, sweet, sweet, my boy. I have to keep reminding myself that I'm not inking this. Like, I'm like, okay, how much detail do I have to put in here? Hey, Adam. Yeah, I have been, well, I've been okay. <laughs> I've been okay, Adam. Uh, you know, 
busy and a little stressed, but okay, you know. <laughs> I'm excited for the shows coming up. I'm excited for the things that I'm working on. Um, I have so many cool things that I'm hoping to, to start talking about soon. Um, yeah, yeah, very excited. Actually, one thing I could I could tell tell y'all, um, the Eris Kickstarter. I'm gonna do a Kickstarter for my comic Eris. I'm finally gonna be finished with the final chapter, and so I'm going to do a collected version. Is how I'm going to release it, and I'm gonna do that on Kickstarter. Uh, most likely end of May, beginning of June or June, July time, sometime this summer. Um, and I will have that more officially announced soon. But if you're watching and you like Eris, it's pretty much done. And I'm just ready to get it printed out and into the world. So uh, stay tuned for more on that. I'm going to have some at C2E2. I'm going to have free copies of the second chapter for people and a free bookmark if they sign up for my... Um, mailing list which is where I'll tell people when the Kickstarter launches and everything so um, if you are coming by C2E2 come by and get a free copy of the book to get ready for the the final conclusion uh, which is what I've been sort of secretly not not so secretly I guess but secretly working on over here amongst other things uh, this piece uh, Jeremy is for a trade well, sort of a pencil and ink exchange so me and some other friends um, you know, comic book creator friends are going to all be at C2E2 and we're all going to draw a pencil drawing and um, trade them up and we're all going to ink each other's work so you know like each person will trade with another person and you know we'll, 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 uh, we'll all get some inked artwork by another person which is pretty cool so I've done this before, and I always enjoy the kind of doing stuff like this. It, it kind of, like I was saying, it's like forcing me out of my comfort zone already just by not inking it myself. And then having someone else ink your stuff really just teaches you some lessons and shows you like what is, you know, how do I do this? And how do other people do it? And like what's what are other ways to do it? Um, so I always enjoy doing a good pencil and ink exchange. I highly recommend it. Um, get yourself some some fresh ideas in your tank some fresh takes on your work we're just gonna black this out I think Maybe just do something like that Adam Klein hopefully yeah I hope the stress is short term yes and Adam is on the commission list that's right um, really been I've been watching I'll tell you right now this is how I how serious I take my commissions as I've been working I've been sort of slowly every day in tiny pieces making my way through an eight hour Silent Hill retrospective <laughs> that goes over every single game completely and uh, just kind of like getting those juices going it's been my little dose of Silent Hill every day get the gears turning you know all right, so people could probably see it a little better now. You can see Cable taking shape there a little bit. Well, I'm glad I'm getting some comments because it says I only have one person watching. So <laughs> this must be just some kind of glitch with the counting or you're all just here one at a time somehow. Um, but anyway, I'm rambling a lot tonight, so... Oh yeah, there we go. That's cool. I like that. I like that. Which one I choose? Well, I don't know. I mean, who says it'll be one? Who knows? Oh yeah, Adam, for sure. I was saying earlier, when I'm not inking myself, when I'm inking myself, my pencils are really loose, which, which um, you know, earlier in the stream, before I had erased all this, 
they were very messy and it was like I was like that's how I would have started inking it is like in that state um, so it's hard for me to do finished pencils but I'm gonna try to do something that it's a little more finished I still want to leave some room for whoever inks it to kind of add some personality to it but um, yeah I have to like actually make some decisions um, it's interesting everybody draws so different you know like watching people draw is is very interesting um, just seeing how different brains form images and like how they end up on the paper um, and like looking at drawings is the same way kind of you, you know if someone looked at this drawing in real life they would see all this erasing and prep work I did and and it's just so much different you know um, experiencing it that way that's why everyone should be buying original art not just from me but from everybody get some art in your life get some art on your wall if you like comics you gotta have art you gotta have art man um, and do some Stephen Platt style uh, maybe bullet hole type things here impressions Ooh, maybe I'll do them a little more Pearson-y. Ooh, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. So, yeah, Adam, what I got to do here is I do have to give at least some guidance to the inker, like, as far as, like, where's the light and dark and things like that. Whereas in my pencils, I, I kind of will do that a little bit, but I make a lot of those decisions with the ink brush on the drawing. You know, I just go straight in and kind of say, all right, like, that's where the dark area is. But the other thing I always forget is that I can pencil light and then go back harder later because I, I never, I don't know, I just sort of build my drawings up with lines, you know. They sort of just become a big kind of twisted mess, you know. And then uh, I kind of chisel it out of there uh, with the eraser and the ink. And I'm already doing it again. <laughs> I'm like gonna have to go clean all these up. You know, it's just a habit. It's like the way you draw. They'll get what they get. They'll get what they get. They can handle it. They're professionals. Everywhere except your walls, huh, Omar? Well, you gotta get some on the walls too. I'm glad you like seeing the process, Adam. I think it's cool. I like the idea that one of the reasons I like doing the live streams, even though this is not always a possibility for me, but I, I try to get on as much as I can, is uh, I like the idea that someone can draw live and then someone's going to have this piece, right? And so they can kind of watch how it was made. And that's not something you used to be able to do in the past. And sometimes you don't want people to watch you make the whole drawing, <laughs> you know, but uh, I think it's pretty cool that you can, you know, that you can sort of, you know, someone could get on on uh, my my past live streams and see their commission getting made or like, you know, a page from a book I'm working on or something. I like that kind of stuff. I I watch that stuff all the time. I find it very interesting as a creative person, but also just as a fan, right? Like how did how did they make this or that or or what what kind of decisions did they make? And as an artist, I'm always like wondering what kind of you know what what are they using and and how are they using it and I don't got this hand as licked as I thought I did let me make that a little thicker there now we'll come back to you um, okay some smoke coming off the, the 
weaponry here. That's kind of cool. That's kind of working. I'm glad I redrew this. The, the earlier one was fine that I was working on last week, uh, but this f fills the paper a little better, more, more the way I like it. Sometimes just one more pass gives you, gives you something a little better. If you just go back one more time, try one more time, you do have to know when to stop though. <laughs> All right. Oh, cool. The guy was going to get a frame. I'm very, very uh, happy to hear that. I had a really good time with that, that piece. Any any excuse to re-engage with Giver is good with me, man. I, I love uh, I love Giver. Bio boosted armor, so cool. Well, that wouldn't quite be how that would work, would it? I can't be completely ridiculous here. Give him a sword too, why not, right? All right. Uh, oh, Jeremy, thanks for, for saying that. That's nice of you. Keep saying stuff like that, and I might even just feel good about it. Cable's a pretty stressed out guy, it seems like, you know. He always seems pretty stressed out. So I'm giving him a little wrinkly brow here. Man, this light is just so bright for me right here. get back to you too. All right, let's get uh, some idea of his other shoulder pad here. All right, because you got to know when to walk away. You got to know.
Deadpool. Yeah. Deadpool's a stressful guy, I would imagine, yeah. Just annoying, too. It's a little better, I think. I was a big fan of the uh Igor Cordy uh, cable stuff and Soldier X stuff. I think I've probably talked about it on here before, but that stuff was uh, was really cool. That was some of my favorite cable. I, it was a lot different. I know a lot of people weren't as into it, but I really enjoyed that. And the the Ladron uh, mini series, or or I guess he was on the regular series, was really good too. Okay, so what am I doing wrong here on this hand? I think the angle isn't quite right. See, it's already, I already had that drawn before, and it was pretty loose, and I probably would have gone in with ink and just tried to make it work, but I'm kind of glad I'm getting another shot at it here. Okay, something like that. Let's do fingers here. Some days. Well, we'll give him another rest. <laughs> we'll get back to him again. Let's get this strap here. Yeah, there you go. No one to fold him. I know someone's going to say, this gun's not big enough. I know. I know. I know. Trust me. Can 
connect these with something like that. Him around those up here. Okay, I'm trying to get through this without a ruler, so. Because I figure if someone's doing this at the show, they're not going to have a ruler, so why should I put them through that? That's stress. Did it again. I was like, okay, when I ink, when I ink this, I'll do this. <laughs> kind of want to give him a funky eye shine there. Something kind of like a little, a little wackier. Something like that. So the you know I was watching X Men ninety seven and uh, the designs are really great and they're they're for the most part almost exactly like the old ones just with with a little more fidelity and sort of like better proportions and stuff. But they changed Bishop's hair. I was like, why did they take away his like awesome mullet, man? Like I don't know. I mean I don't really care. It didn't ruin it for me. Like I it's not a thing to argue about. But I'm just like. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what that decision, why, why that decision was made. I guess is what I'm wondering. I'd be curious to know. Like everyone else's hair was basically the same. Here we go. They weren't even close to the right spots, were they? All right. Yeah, the mullet, Jeremy. That's what I'm talking about, dude. That's what I'm talking about. I was stoked to see my man Forge show up, too. Love that guy.
All right. <laughs> I think honestly I would be faster if I was inking this. But I'm going to try to take advantage and do some cool little details here. But you know what? I am putting a bunch of bullet shells. And I know that if someone, if Stegman actually does this exchange, which he probably won't, I bet he won't eat these shells. I bet he won't. It's my challenge to you, Stegman, you hear me? Honestly, uh, it'll probably be me and Dave doing all this. Yeah, Rick James. sure about that. Let's work on this hand while we think about that.
Oliver656, hello. Zesty Beetle, hello. Oh, yes. Rick James is Zesty. Yes, yes. All right. You guys are drawers out there. Do you prefer penciling or inking, or what do you like? digital yeah that makes sense uh, what you're saying there Jeremy yeah I uh, I was doing some character designs recently and um, they were they were um, you know I was doing them on the iPad and it was kind of like they were okay, but I just wasn't feeling them right, you know. And then as soon as I brought them onto paper and finished them up on paper, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> that's better. Playing in ink, yeah. Brush is is definitely a thing, dude. Like if you start in on the brush, it takes it takes a while to get sort of proficient at it. But part of being proficient with the brush, I think, is being really open to what the brush does, and um, and trying to go with it instead of fight it. That was something I learned at some point. I just needed to loosen up, actually. Um, I mean, obviously, there's things you you can't do loose, loose if you're doing like if you're trying to ink a 
a lot you know a straight line or something with a brush you obviously but hey you got to be open to what it's giving you it's like another aspect of the piece and so instead of fighting it I usually try to I try to go with it and if it leaves a big line like right now I'm missing that like I feel like I'm so in control of everything right now in the drawing it's I kind of miss some of that uh, spontaneity I get when I'm inking but I'm trying to maintain some of that energy here and maybe maybe whoever inks this will pick up on the energy about this forearm just keeps bothering me. That's a little better. There's that rain. That sounds nice. I love a good rainstorm. Well, you're, you're, thank you and you're welcome, Zesty Beetle.
All right. So we're just getting some empty shell pouches here. Okay, let's make some let's make some solid lines here, and leave the line weights up to the inker. I mean, obviously there there's the thickness I have here, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be super prescriptive. Maybe just in some areas. <laughs>
Yeah, sure. Let's just leave that kind of. Like that. When in doubt, black it out. That's what they say. So <laughs> I want some harsher shadows here. If you guys missed the earlier part of the stream, make sure you go back and watch some of the stuff about the Decadence comics. Those guys rule. Thank you. 
Hey, hey, got Don here in the house. Got to do some cable, man. You know how it is. You know how we do. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there. Get this other shoulder pad kind of sort of in here a little bit. Uh, yeah, I I uh, was just saying earlier, Don. I was uh, a little, I hadn't watched any of it, but I got caught up last night, so I'm all the way up to episode five. Uh, it was pretty awesome. I really really digging it. It's just kind of all the cool things about X Men distilled down into to a show, you know. So it feels you know very. Uh, it's like it's like the nostalgia is there, but it feels so modern and, and some of it's um the writing is very smart you know i would say the writing and sort of the ca way they capture the drama between the characters feels feels very x-men but it's like just done so well you know and it distills down so much of the different characters uh personalities and stuff i really enjoyed that about it And then, of course, the action's cool, too. <laughs> but I think they've got a winner on their hands there. I could be wrong, but uh, we'll see if they can maintain, you know? Adam, thanks for stopping by, buddy. I'm glad you're enjoying the drawings. Enjoy the rest of your evening, bud. Okay, that's more than enough for that. <laughs> Come on, Tyrell. Nobody wants to ink all this. Come on.
Ow. Ooh, there comes the rain again. All right, guys, you see how I'm avoiding this hand and finishing this gun? Let's go finish these things. Come on, Tyrell. What are we doing over here, buddy? Smudge this some more. Okay, let's just make a call. Let's make a call here. But yeah, Don, I was super into uh, those, especially those last couple episodes. I was glad they did some life death. I, I liked how they sort of updated a little bit, but kind of remained true. And I was like, oh, dang, they're going to go new X-Men here in episode five. I was like, as soon as I saw them over on Genosha, I was like, oh, boy. Uh, I think they're going to go new X-Men here. <laughs> Man, so cool. Gambit was so cool. Rogue was so cool. I know, right? They really got Cyclops good, you know, because I, I, I've always had a soft spot for him, but people se seem to write him as kind of like either like a jerk, know-it-all, you know, but that's it. I love that he lost his temper, you know? You know, I love that he's like just being real, you know? <laughs> I never understood why people hate him, but I mean, I guess I do. Everybody hates leaders, you know, when they're when they're you know, on a team like this. It's an easy, it's an easy mark. Everybody wants to be the rebel, you know, everybody wants to be Wolverine. But yeah. And Nightcrawler was so cool, man. They really nailed him. I loved it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, Don. That Cyclops is my Cyclops. Well, thank you, Wandering Bill. Or Wandering Bill? Wandering Bill? Bill. Okay, hand. Let's try it again. <laughs> what is it, you know? What is it with this hand? I thought I had it.
Well, we got to figure it here soon. Because Tyrell ain't got all night. Put them off again. We're gonna put them off again.
Well, Manny, that is nice of you to say, but I think your name seems to imply that you're the man. So, you might want to check your facts there, man. Wait a minute, what are we doing here? Where did I put these? Okay. Here. 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 All right. See, some fool is going to just do that random, so I should probably do it more specific. Alright, let's get some here. We got to add some shapes here. Let's just do this. Let's do this. Let's go really dark here. Sometimes you're just drawing the stuff, you know? I think this is all the stuff. <laughs> this is all the cable stuff right here. Just drawing all the cable stuff. Don't worry, I didn't forget about the hand. Uh, the page on the left is the coolest page you've ever seen. You mean this one right here? Uh, if anybody missed the earlier part of the stream, um, this is an Aliens commission that I did last, last year, end of last year. And I have turned it into a print that is mostly the same size as the commission. So if you are at C2E2 or Heroes Con or Cartoon Crossroads Columbus, I will have these prints at those shows. I will try to make them available on my website as well. But uh, yeah, a nice black and white repro of the Hadley's Hope piece is what I've been calling it. 
what's my rule on spotting blacks and chunky lines? Oh, that's a good question, man. <laughs> I'm trying to be brave. I don't know if I have a rule other than try to do more black shapes. <laughs> like I've been trying to do more. So I'm glad that people are noticing because I've, I've kind of feel like I had not a lot of blacks in my work before, like big black areas. And so um, I've just been trying to be more brave with it and try to use them. You know, if there's an area that I think is sort of just, it's not really, like if you're not sure where to put them, which is kind of the hard part sometimes, just look at an area of the drawing that just feels sort of flat or stagnant. And if there's a way that you can either black that out or use an adjacent area blacked out to really make it pop forward, that that's a good spot, right? So if we want his hand to pop forward here, some black back here will help. If you want the gun to pop forward, some black back here will help. If we want this knee pad to go forward, a nice chunky line will help. So I kind of use, it's sort of backwards from how some people do it. I sort of use a like fat in front, thin in back. It's sort of a, you know, I don't always do it that way, but you know, fat lines in front, thin lines in back. So if you really want something to pop or if you have a good shape, that's a good place to use your chunky lines. Like if you have a shape that's just like a, a nice chunky shape, put a chunky line around it, you know? Um, so the shoulder pads are a good example of that. And if you can give them a little bit of a, the other thing I try to do is, is square things off just a little bit. Gives them a little bit of that like, um, that extra oomph in the energy. Add a little zig, a little zag, something. And then the other thing that I don't do a great job at, but that helps with those decisions too, is just also deciding to have some delicate lines. You know, you really have to, you know, I have to push myself sometimes to, to get some delicate lines in there that are not, um, that aren't doing all, all this crazy, you know, emoting <laughs> or whatever term you want to use for it. Okay, we're close, we're close. We got to, um, see, and that'll pop that in front of there. We gotta figure out that hand still. I'm feeling a little nervous about it, guys. A little nervous about that hand, but I believe that if we, if we send good vibes, if everybody sends good vibes, we'll figure it out. And then maybe I can go relax. <laughs> uh, start all over tomorrow. Yeah. I was watching my kid today, so I didn't get a ton of work time in, but I did get to do a little bit of drawing and worked this up a little bit, actually. I was waiting for her to get out of the class and drawing cable, sitting in the coffee shop drawing cable. when you're thinking about your black areas too, to just 
try to find shapes you know like if you already have a drawing going and you've got all these details in and everything just sit back a little bit and just see if you can see any shapes and then maybe see if there's a way you can bring some of those out to accentuate you know whatever whatever you already have going on um, and and say oh can I use a shape to do this instead of rendering or instead of you know um, tones or colors or something I don't know if any of that helps, man. I just kind of blabbed for a minute, but it's something I'm working on. Yes, I'm drawing a bunch of bullets, of course, bullet casings. And he's sort of sitting on a gun here. I don't know how that well that's going to read, <laughs> you, just, you know, but he's sitting on something. As long as people can tell he's sitting on something and not just squatting, but, you know, what are you going to do? We've made the decision. Here we are, right? So we're going with it. All right, we are very close, very close. And I can go enjoy my evening here. Not that I'm not enjoying this, this is wonderful. I've saved the best for last. You guys can see me butcher this hand one last time. <laughs> Again, I'll be at C2E2. You guys are gonna come to the show, come by table V, what am I, V2, VO2 in Artist Alley. And then there will be a schlub panel on Saturday. Details to come. Um, so don't miss that. And uh, me and Ryan and Kenny will all be at the show. So if you're at the show, you can get schlub signed by all of us. And if you don't have the schlub yet, I'll have all the issues and the trade paperback at the show because it comes out next Wednesday. If you're not at the show, you need to go pick up your copy at your local comic shop, right? You need to go get the schlub. Demand it. I am very proud of the work we did on that series, and I would love it if more people checked it out. So buy a copy for yourself. Buy a copy for a friend. Get me to sign them both at C2E2. We're in business. Okay. Um, hand, here we go. I will not be at San Diego this year, unfortunately. Um, and I will be at Heroes Con, Jeremy. Yes. Um, I will be at Heroes Con. I will be in June. I will be at Cartoon Crossroads Columbus in September. I will be at Chicago Alternative Comics Expo in August. And I will be at C2E2 next weekend. Wow, that's a lot of shows for me. I haven't been doing shows like that for a while. So wish me luck. <laughs> No, I'm excited. I just found out about Heroes today. I had such a blast at that show last year. I cannot wait to uh, to do it again. So, if you guys have never been, I highly recommend Heroes. It is it is a lot of fun. Um, whether you make money or not, if you're tabling, it's still a fun show. Uh, uh, but I, you know, sometimes you you're lucky and you, you also make money too. But uh, if you're not there to sell, 
it's an amazing show regardless because it's just packed with the best comic book artists working right now you know just like the masters you know the, the, the modern masters of comic art are all at at heroes okay hand we're gonna do it guys we're gonna whew, all right let's do this hand okay here we go we're gonna do this hand There we go. We're just going to chunk up the hand here, okay? Chunk it up. Question is, can I make it translatable to someone else? To an anchor. This will be my first time back at Cartoon Crossroads Columbus since the first year they had it. Um, I was at their very first show, at least I think it was their first show, and I have not been able to make it back since then. So I am excited to um, to be back at that show again as well. It's kind of a cool show because it's sort of a mix of indie and, and, and sort of a little bit more mainstream adjacent, or at least book market kind of mainstream. Um, and the best part about Cartoon Crossroads Columbus, other than just amazing artists that will be there in person, is the Billy Ireland Cartoon Art Museum, uh, which is sort of a, you know, it's like mega for, mega for like... <laughs> comic artist man it's it's just it's got everything it's got bill waterson it's got nemo little nemo and slumberland pages it's got green lantern pages you know any any cool artist that's ever drawn comics they have pieces by them there and it is a really amazing a really amazing museum if you've never been to columbus um it's worth if you're into comics it's worth going just to see the museum at least once you know it's worth checking out a short trip to columbus to just kind of check out that incredible museum especially if you're into more things like sunday strips they have a lot of great stuff like they have all of the calvin and Hobbes, you know stuff so that's pretty cool um oh cool man manny you're gonna be there that's great man i'm excited that you'll be at the show again and that you're going to be in Artist Alley. I'm hoping I get a good spot in Artist Alley this year. I lucked out last year. I had a great spot. Um, so I'm hoping I can be adjacent to a similar area again. I was in the Indie Island section. And, um, yeah. Okay, let's see if we can just put a little something on the hand here. God, I 
just cannot seem to make it work here. We'll have to chill out at the show, Manny, by the way. Sorry. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing you, man. Um, All right. Still don't got it. <laughs> phase where it's like uh, might get diminishing returns here All right. We'll take another look at that hand tomorrow, but that's good enough for now, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We got cable, yo. We got cable. Well, folks, again, if you uh, missed any of the announcements, I will be at uh, C2E2 in a couple weeks. Then I will be at three other shows, CXC in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I will have Aliens prints at these as well, by the way. I'll be at Heroes Con in June and Cake in August. So I really hope to see folks at some of these shows. Um, if you're in any of those areas, please come out and say hi. And um, thank you, everybody, for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. That would really help me. And if you really want to help me out and be cool, go subscribe to my newsletter over at TyrellCannon.com. I think I have a link in the description finally. I finally remember to do that. Um, but yes. I am going to take the rest of my night off, so you guys enjoy yours as well, and uh, I will talk to you all later.